Drew, welcome to the show, man. What's going on? It's great to see you, man. Glad to have you. We're back. Our second ever interview. It's been a few years now. Lots has happened in the last few years, Drew. Um, And now you have a shiny new $25 million fund. You can lead investments out of there. Take me through the progression from, yeah, fund one, $5.6 million fund. Then you now you have a $25 million fund, just like the differences with that and uh, any, any change in strategy, anything with that, just having a bigger fund now. Absolutely. First of all, I have to shout you out because the reason that I reached back out to you is that somebody sent me our original video and I was like, oh yeah, I, I, oh yeah, I remember this. <laughs> and then I looked at the view count and it was like 27,000 views. And I was like, who the heck wants to hear me <laughs> and my man Gordon talk about venture capital for like 40 minutes? Like what? Um, it's amazing. But that, that was like, that was crazy to me. That was awesome. Like good content, man. So kudos to you. Yeah. Absolutely. Shout out uh, Lucas Poles for making that happen. Yeah. So I love that. Um, but as, in terms of what has happened from fund one to fund two, um, you know, even even when we did our first interview, I still hadn't raised, we still hadn't raised the full 5.6. So super exciting that um, we were able to close that up and uh, get to fund two. So yeah, I mean, we basically had raised about 2.8 million um, and we're, we're bumming along, investing, getting the 25 K check here from a friend and family or somebody. And, you know, that was kind of life for a while, just raising and deploying. Um, then we had a big, uh, big announcement come out of postscript that had raised their series B, um, super exciting, uh, led by Greylock, um, huge markup, huge spike. Um, and basically within about a week between my existing investors and a few phone calls, I raised the last like 2 million like that and we closed the fund and that was it. And so it was just one of those crazy, amazing feats of luck meets preparation meets, you know, truly helping come in, some of these companies really grow and be successful. So um, closed the $5.6 million fund. About six months later, we had a conversation with one of our anchors and they said, well, we're really interested in getting more into venture. We're a really awesome institution that hasn't quite dipped the toes in other than a few investments here and there, you know, kind of opportunistically. Um, And we said, well, why don't we work together? So we ended up closing 25 million uh, in in March of this year. And we uh, partnered with Bank of California as well as uh, BLT family office in Santa Monica and about 12 other investors that all joined us um, in our $25 million close plus a bunch of folks that came in um, alongside of the from fund one. So a combination of people came together to really make us the ability to have a lead check fund now, which is super exciting for us. We've been waiting for <laughs> this opportunity. Put me in coach. Yes, uh, yes. So, so here we are. I love uh, it. So, hired an associate, Mara Chabin, mm, who's amazing. Yep. I've known her for the last three or four years. She participated in our diversity scout program. She was a kind of a mentor or a mentee of mine before that. And um, we're also hiring ahead of platform. Um, so it's just, you know, we got a full team now, which is super exciting. Yeah. Having a bigger fund obviously allows you to do different things. Management fees are different. So then you can actually build out a team a little bit more. People don't realize from like a small fund, we hear people raise this, like how do you actually pull out logistically? It's very hard from a fee perspective because it is uh, a lot less money compared to something that's in the 20s or 30s or 40s and beyond in terms of millions. With that too, though, so building up the team now, how are you thinking about that? So you have the associate on board. You have that. I, I would just, I, it's funny, I just talked to like Mariana Senko from Future Ventures. It's just her and Steve Jurvetson who are the only two like, investors on the team. And they're hiring out obviously other people on the team. How are you thinking through what that role is going to be like even for this next hire of the platform? Yeah, so associate is essentially deal flow and front of house um, and qualification. And then head of platform, basically their job is post investment. How do we accelerate these companies, connect them with more Shopify accounts, big commerce accounts, CEOs? How do we leverage the Hawk Media relationship where there's 300 people, 600 brands? Um, How is someone full time like making that connection, right? So right now, I mean, I did it just kind of like 30% of my time (laughs) at the start of the fund. You know, now Mara and I are kind of owning it together. So we were like, it's like 50-50 now. And so somebody who's full-time will be like the velocity that can come with 
our investments and the relationship on the Hawk Media side. So, you know, we've really proven that our investments with the media partnership, like make a huge splash, a huge difference, whether it's advice, whether it's sales, whether it's partnerships, makes a big difference. So um, we're super excited that we're able to make this make this person truly like make the engine turn the way that we've sort of envisioned it for the last five years. So yeah, I was at a VC platform conference recently at the global summit. And it's interesting how each role and platform, every venture firm does it differently. Like every venture firm approaches it different. It's, it's so crazy. I said, I said, I don't even want you to have venture experience <laughs> in my job rack. Cause I was like, I mean, it's going to be different than wherever you oh, came from. So absolutely. it's fun. <laughs> and it's more like you're looking for characteristics of them to be successful in the role. You don't have to have a venture background to excel, especially in a platform position. Cause it's just a connecting people. I know other people looking for, uh, all, all the time. I know it was, it was like uh cross looking for a chief of staff at one point doing some of that connecting and for team was looking for someone at one point, again, doing connecting. We're seeing that more and more and more. And especially for you in terms of your firm, looking at Hawk ventures with having this Hawk media relationship, it's just super interesting. Take me through how that has turned out in terms of fun one companies, how the relationship works with Hawk media, helping them and guiding them. What does that kind of look like typically? Yeah, I mean, so we got 18 companies out of Fund One, um, and we've deployed a, a little over four million in total. So we got some yep. left for reserves, which yep. is great because we've got some follow-on rounds coming on soon here with a couple amazing Series A. Um, so what we've done is continuously meet up with them, find out what their new case studies are, bring those case studies to our sales team, to our marketing teams, to our to our, you know, 200 core marketing experts that are out there working with brands. And so what we're constantly doing is just trying to figure out what the funnel looks like to get more attention, right? We'll also build out a skew inside of the media organization that says, we have a sports influencer marketing skew for college athletes, right? I mean, that sounds yeah. so <laughs> specific. But we built that for Icon Source, the hat that I'm wearing. Uh, we had a really great case study that we did actually with Crocs and with Icon Source as a platform and with college athletes. And so what we're doing is we had that great case study with Crocs. And now we're going to take that to our sales team, go out to the front of you know all the brands that we talked to and be like, stand out with a brand, with someone who's performance oriented, with someone who can be a part of your company. You know, there's other ways that you can compensate them with cash, with equity. There's all these different ways that you can get a really badass young college yeah. athlete involved with your business. I mean, um, Sprouts just did 50 female athletes uh, for the 50, 50 day or 50 year anniversary of Title IX. Super cool. Like there's just all these really creative things we can do as marketers. Your job is to be creative and also pr produce ROI got to manage both. So, you know, again, like we created a SKU for an investment. It's going great. We're onboarding it into the platform. So these are the types of things that we can do with companies. Um, and it's exciting because we can really make or break some of these companies growth with this, with the scale that we have. Yeah. It's such a unique aspect of it to have that capability, to have that talk about value add. This is truly a value add situation. And obviously that's what you're looking for companies that you can help in that capacity. But take me through more in depth in terms of looking at different companies for Hawk Ventures. Now you have fun too, $25 million fund, a lot bigger, so five times the size, basically four or five times the size. What are you looking for in the companies now that you invest in out of Hawk Ventures? Yeah, so I think one of the main things that we're looking for is growth. Like you got to have a product in market that's working, right? Like, you know, I always say I'm not, I'm not taking you from zero to 20 miles an hour. Like I'm taking you from 20 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour. Like that's where we really accelerate the most. Um, yeah. Company that we first started talking to way over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, we watched them tick, 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 tick up to 20,000 in monthly revenue. We invested. They've now crossed the 100,000 MR mark. You know, they're on to, you know, over 1.2 million AR. That's just right now, right? And we've been able to slot that company into our marketing operations, refer them clients, build that base um, because they're already growing, right? I think a lot of companies out there, they're talking to VCs, they got an idea, they got a beta, they maybe haven't charged any clients yet. People are using it, but there's maybe not any revenue yet. It's like all that's like, it's too early. Like we want to come in at that perfect spot, inject you into our system, 
catapult you out into like a hyper growth kind of strategy, right? That's what we're looking for in the lead check fund, right? So um, now we're doing uh, what I call a tracker check. It's 50K. We do it really quickly. And then our job is to get in there and really hustle alongside the founders, work hard, produce partnerships, produce relationships. Um, if we can get that company into the flywheel of Hawk Media and like really catapulted like we're talking about, it'll be pretty quickly indicated. We'll follow on with more cash, lead around, get some other folks that we invest with really closely um, and close out a pre-seed or seed round and tell the world. Right. So that's that's kind of what our new strategy is. Um, some companies have great technology. They're awesome. They're not a fit for us. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're like unventure backable. It just yeah. means that like our, our perfect sort of crazy storm of clients and expertise just may not match up with this particular company. Just because we don't follow on doesn't mean you're not doing great. And doesn't mean that we might not participate in a future round even. Right. Yeah. We're just not going to like, lead it, put our necks out there um, and and like take the risk, right? That, that, that's just because it doesn't fit into the mold. We have a very specific mold. And if you can fit into that, we can crush it with you. Yeah, and it makes it much easier, I imagine, imagine as well, in terms of evaluating. You know what you're looking for very, very clearly. And it's harder for some of these that are so broad and generous. So like, how do you understand what you're looking for? I'm curious though, too, with this now second fund, $25 million fund, how are you thinking about if you have any ownership targets, percent for follow on, like those types of things? I know a lot of venture uh, capitalists who are raising funds, if those are the things that are going to be asked from LPs, like what is the strategy behind it? I'm curious on what uh, Hawk Ventures is thinking. Yeah, so our target ownership is 10%, one to two yep. million, you know, board seat, lead the deal, uh, seed and pre seed, right? We carved out 3 million out of the fund to say, look, we'll do these 50K checks. We'll do a bunch of them every year. We'll kind of seed and see which ones are really percolating in terms of the partnership and then back those ones, right? Three to five a year is kind of the clip that we're hoping to make. Um, some companies take a little bit longer to figure out what that partnership looks like. Some are a little bit further along and it's super obvious. Like PostScript was like, like lightning happened quickly. There was a time in the market. Everybody wanted SMS. They had Shopify. It just, it just spun really quickly. The partnership yeah. worked really well. We drove tons of leads to them. It just made sense. Right. So that's like kind of the perfect situation growth wise, a new channel works yep. well, early stage, fantastic founding team, great backers. And like, we want to join that party. Right. Yeah. Um, so that, that's like a perfect scenario, right? Now in venture, we understand that like, sometimes you got to sit back and build and help and like wait and see and trust the team, right? So we're also like understanding that we're going to invest earlier, back founders when they're not necessarily at that product market fit stage. We still want to start with a little bit and then see where it goes, right? We're yeah. builders just like all the entrepreneurs that, that we back are too. So you know, we're building alongside them. You know, we have the stomach for it. We have the deal flow to do really great deals and deploy the capital that we've raised. So, you know, we're, we're confident. Um, so this is, I have to dive deeper in this cause this is really interesting. So the 50 K checks, you mentioned like roughly 3 million saved for that. So like 60 deals or something, is that also the same requirements you mentioned the like 20 K plus MRR? Is that the same requirements? Usually it'll, be, it'll probably be before the 20 K okay. MRR. Yeah. Um, we're just like, hey, this is great. This is accelerating. Let's yeah. see how much we can further accelerate it, right? And when that's and when that's all clicking, you know, we got money to just go. And everyone feels yeah. good about it. Everyone's excited. Like we've mitigated a ton of the pieces that we need. Um, you know, it's hard to be a generalist investor and just be like, all right, well, yep, let's yeah. lead this round, four million. We're gonna take two board seats and you know, we have conviction, like, let's go. And then six months later, you're like, what just yeah. happened? Right? Yeah. Like, I, I heard somebody say, uh, this is some really awesome venture cats here in um, in Denver who've been in venture for like 20 years. You know, as you guys know, Boulder has been around a long mm. time. Brad Feld, Jason yep. Mendelson, Foundry Group, like really some of the founding fathers of modern venture capital. You know, these like guys who've invested with these folks, they're like, if you show up to the board meeting... And there's like 
branded coffee mugs like all around the table and like you've just invested in this company is like you're screwed like yeah they care about the wrong things you know um i just i just loved that like that little anecdote right it's like how are companies being evaluated before they're putting money into and how is that risk being mitigated we just think about it very differently than most firms we also have like an operating business that we stand next to so like our quiver of arrows is just very different in terms of like what our needs are to move forward. Right. So like we just, we're just very different. I think that a lot of firms, we also have a a much narrower investment thesis than most firms. So that's either for some people, a good thing or for some people, a bad thing. We think it's a good thing. Uh, We think it it keeps us out of doing deals that otherwise we shouldn't be in. Um, So it, it, it works for us. It works for our LPs, you know, yeah, um, understanding that yeah. there's a good commingling there to produce alpha, right? Do, so that's the do whole they, point. Do you think that, like, so with uh, this new fund, then with that being part of it, do you think most of the checks, most of the companies you see, you'll end up giving the 50K and then follow on essentially with the more, bigger check or a mix of both pretty evenly split? Because actually, I'm, the reason I asked, I'll take a step back for a second. The reason I asked is like for Vitalize Angels, so we have Vitalize the fund, we also have Vitalize Angels, which invest pre seed, and then we get pro rata in those deals for the fund. So we actually have like a you know, 12 to 18 months until they raise their next round, we'll invest out of Vitalize, the fund. But we can also, in theory, could invest early if we want to. But I'm curious on for you how that works. Yeah, I mean, the way I, the way I socialize it is like, we set aside 3 million to like properly invest 22 million, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And like the only way that you really understand what's going on is like when you're in a deal, when you're looking at the updates, yeah. when you're watching like, in the rear of your mirror, like, hey, that thing you said you were gonna do four months ago, like, did that happen? Like, all these operator like yeah. level understandings of things can be really proven out and how you follow on. So I see us, you know, I see us doing like a good clip of of lead deals, but I also see like a year later, you know, we've decided, well, this 50k check isn't turning into a million check, but whoa, you're raising a series A, we want to put in 250, like. You know, because you've been doing a great job. We're just not yeah. going to lead that deal, right? But we will follow on because they're doing good, right? And so, like, you back the companies that continue to do good. You watch the founders who kind of don't get it done or don't show up or pivot away from something that you can't be helpful to because it's early stage, right? All these yeah. things happen, right? We're just, like, we're just calling a spade a spade. Right. Yeah. Um, and so for us, it's like, let's all work together. And if we really love this relationship, let's get married, you know? Yeah. With, with the Hawk as well in the last few years. So since you've done that fun one now having fun too, what do you see in terms of trends or companies you're excited about that are building in certain spaces or types of companies, even just uh, think of other founders potentially listening and what might be a fit for you guys at Hawk? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, What's interesting about the Hawk Media and Hawk Ventures piece is like, obviously Hawk Media does a really good job. Marketing, content, strategy, all that stuff. 60% of the stores are like, are Shopify, right? And then you have Hawk Ventures, we're early stage. Uh, We do MarTech, ad tech, and e-com enablement. That's kind of the whole thing, right? Um, For founders, what's the question again? So what you're saying for founders who are... Yeah, for, for founders thinking about for them, like what types of companies you invest in? And you said Martech, what does it look like or trends you're looking for within that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I think um, it's helping people sell more stuff. Like how does your tool enable sales? Yeah. Like on the internet, right? So it's like, <laughs> so if, if you fall into that bucket, like we want to talk to you, there's probably potentially some way we can work together, right? Yeah. Um, so for, for me, it's like, I want to know early too, right? Like, I'm happy to say, hey, you're too early, but like, send us your monthly updates, you know? Um, in fact, just send them to me now, you know? Like, we'll definitely <laughs> keep track. Like, we like that, right? Like, let's build a relationship. When it makes sense, we do a tracker check. When it makes sense, you know, we lead the deal. So uh, people ask like, well, what are your check sizes? I'm like, 50 to 2 million, but... <laughs> Like reason. <laughs> good luck getting the one to two, you know I mean? I don't mean yeah. that in a bad way, but we don't come out of the gate with those types of checks. Um, we really truly work and hustle alongside the founders to produce results. 
that make us feel like super excited about putting more capital in. Um, so that's, that's, you know, if, yeah. for us again, it's ad tech, MarTech, e-commerce enablement, anything that's in that world, anything that helps sellers produce more sales, tools, new channels, um, you know, things that produce margin, things that are on the enablement side of shop of, of e-commerce. So like logistics, that kind of types of things, anything that touches that stack is what we're experts in. I'm curious with that too. So with what you've already kind of mentioned already with what you're looking for and where you're going now, I want to have you call out like maybe two companies and just, you know, maybe how they came to you or what you heard about them first. Like, did you invest that 50K check? I guess it was a new fund. So I don't know if you've invested yet, but how they kind of came to you, what you liked about them, what they're doing. I'm just curious about a couple of your investments. Any ones in particular you would like to call out? Yeah. So there's a company called Clickvoyant, which is super awesome. They're basically like a robo analyst for data sources. So like the dashboard in their mind is like kind of dead. Like somebody has to read and contextualize the dashboard in order for any of the data to make sense. Right. So this idea that like I can hook up to Google analytics, HubSpot, Shopify, bam, you can produce this like super in-depth data oriented analytics brain, right? These women, Mia and her co-founder Kate have been doing data analytics for 15 years at marketing agencies. They're like, we just want to make this easier for people to know what's going on, right? Um, it's actually super interesting. So we purchased a bunch of accounts from them. We're using uh, like 10 different accounts. Our team's loving it. And uh, one of the accounts, I love this because this is <laughs> this is like ridiculous, but also amazing at the same time. They're like, well, this is way too complex for us. Way too much information. Like we just like that's our feedback. Right. And it's like this is this is the world that we live in. Right. We're like people operating their businesses. They're not sophisticated enough to help themselves. Right. And they even hire marketing agencies to tell them, like, what should I be doing? And it's like, well, here's all the things you should be doing that could make <laughs> you more money, right? So it's it's super fascinating, like, getting, like, the feedback directly, right? So on one hand, our, our strategy people look at this data and they're like, this is amazing. Like, this would take me 300 hours, bang my head against the wall to find these common connections that a robot just does in 30 minutes, right? right? So from our perspective, like now we get to go serve data insights. We get to like sort out the art side of this analytics because the science has already been done for us, right? So that's a company we invested a small amount, tracker check. We're working alongside them, you know, sort of deciding, like determining what the next steps are. You know, we're still producing insights, case studies. We're still working on that, but, but that's what we do. We get really close to the founders. We get them close to the Hawk Media team, the VPs, the heads of the company, and we start producing kick-ass results and then they go tell the world about it, right? So that that's one example of a company that we have a tracker check-in that we did earlier this year. With that tracker check for that one, and I guess I just to understand more. So is that end up being like their pre-seed round is tracker check and then 12 months later, it's the, you're going to invest in a fund or is it like out on its own? Like, you know what I mean? I'm curious about that. Yeah. So we invested in their pre-seed. She's still okay. raising capital. She's closing capital every month. Um, yep. She also just had a baby the other day. So Amazing. they're like, and she's just, she's such a rock star. Um, yeah, I love it. So, um, but so, so she's still raising. So we were a part of like what I would call a pre-seed. Okay. Um, and then we, since we can lead deals, we can just come in and decide what the round is going to look like, what it's going to be, who we're going to yeah. do it with. Okay. It's a $2 million round. We're going to put in a million. Hey, our friends over here who really like this deal too, like we're just going to do it and go. Right. Yeah. And just keep building keep hitting, um, hitting the metrics that we want. So it's, it's, yeah, we just get to decide like with the founders, what we want to do, how we want to do it, how we want to take the next steps and, um, you know, continue hitting growth targets, which they're, they're doing really well on the growth side too. So. Yeah. That's amazing. I would love to hear just one more company, even like a, maybe a fun one company and maybe how you found them. And now we're at now with, now you have another fund. So I'm curious about how that works too. Yeah. So, um, so we've done some co-mingling of funds, actually. Yeah. Um, that's part of like fund two was like, well, we have access to all these amazing fund one companies. If they're yeah. doing really well, we want to put more money in. We did that with Postscript uh, in yeah. a, a round that they opened up. Fund two came into that. So perfect example. Um, 
But no, so um, join Skill Bank, which is founded by Mehek and has an awesome team based in LA. They have a program that teaches marketers how to be marketers and then get some jobs. So I know Mehek. Um, yeah, I met her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so you know her. So so we invested. We've invested twice now. Nice. Um, we've co-mingled Fund One and Fund Two. Um, she's moving to this really badass asynchronous model for teaching marketers, right? So it's no yeah. longer this cohort. There's 30 people. We'll do another cohort. Like they're, they're adding so much more scale to the business. Mm. Um, we've hired a bunch of people from her organization. Love them. Dentsu, a bunch of other big advertising agencies have hired from her. They, they create great, amazing employees who were not doing marketing before. But they're so excited to like be in the marketing world and have a laptop job and like have all these amazing people that they work around. Right. And so we're seeing this like new kind of worker that's, you know, maybe not coming from the traditional path, but they get into this new world and they're super excited and they're working hard and they're not like, where do my snacks go? And like, I want more time off. They're like, they're just excited to like be crushing it in a world yeah. that they like and they're it's new for them, right? So, you know, I, I'm I'm really big believers in back and the joint skill bank team. We've co-mingled with them and they've continued to kick ass, you know? With a company like that, just for context then, so you don't have to not to share numbers, but what was it about them and in their next round then for investing in them again out of the then fund two you mentioned, uh, what was it about the team in terms of the progress they had made? Was it like their growth rate was great? combination of that like things that you had seen on like user growth like i'm just curious on for people for context yeah well it, this was a different one for us because this isn't what i would like call down the fairway marketing technology mm, that right. helps brands sell more right so like right. it already was like kind of a different type of investment for us but super strategic we're an agency we hire yep. people they're a tech company, they're an ed tech company, they train people and get them placed. So like we have all this commingling of like, of knowledge, of, of placement, which placement just accelerates everything. Um, we also like our HR and, and recruiting team refers people to Skill Bank when they're too early for us, but they've applied and they're like, oh, well you should go over to Skill Bank. So there's all this stuff that we've been able to help them with. Um, really loved all the updates, all the, everything that they've been able to accomplish in a year. And we just felt we we, were, we felt super stoked to continue to support them. So um, so yeah, That's I mean, awesome. Awesome. from a numbers perspective, it was kind of less it was less metrics driven, more like staffing and uh, you know how they've made adjustments and yep. what their strategy new strategies were. And so we were just really excited to to be able to follow on and and continue to give them runway to execute on the async strategy. Yeah, I appreciate sharing that because I think it is helpful for founders to hear some of that in terms of what what gets them the next round of funding. Because one, it's already hard enough to raise a round of funding, but two, to get to the next round of funding and raise again, continue that pattern uh, of growth. Obviously, there's a lot that has to happen. One of the things we haven't chatted about yet, you mentioned it in the very beginning, uh, Hawk Ventures Scout Program. What is that? How does that work? How did that come about? I'm curious, man. Yeah, so um, one of my associates, uh, part-time associates, uh, Blake, um, he really wanted to work on something that him and I have been talking about for a while, which is was just, was just a, an idea about training people who don't have traditional venture backgrounds. Um, one of the hardest parts about getting a job in venture is like, well, what do you know about venture? Like, have you placed checks? Like, do you know what it's like when a CEO like lies to you while you're doing due diligence? Like all these yeah. things, like most people have great business backgrounds but they don't have a background in VC or even tech to be able to like have the anecdotes that you need in order to come into venture in one way, shape or form. So Blake and I were like, well, what if we like taught people how we do venture and then we could create a pathway to be a venture partner if you find us a deal and we invest in it and you're like the lead partner on it, right? So um, the diversity venture program came out of this idea of like, you know, Venture has a diversity problem. It's a bunch of people that look like me. <laughs> and uh, and we need like much more equal, uh, diverse decision making uh, in order to progress as a society, as a culture, as technology builders. We need more viewpoints at the partner level, right? Well, guess what? You can't make someone a partner tomorrow that has no experience. Like, 
You can't do that, right? Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, like people need like three to five to seven years of runway to be able to get to that GP spot, that VP spot, you know, to become an LP. Like you have to have a ton of experience. So I was like, listen, how could I help this problem? Well, I love to teach. I'm happy to kind of open up the books and show people how we do things. Um, and so for me, it was like, well, I can lend my privilege to other people who want to get into venture and are amazing and smart and talented and, and diverse, but they don't have venture experience. So like, let me give them the experience. They'll have Hawk Ventures scout program on their resume. They've, they've, you know, diligence deals, they have opinions, they have, you know, a four, 15 weeks of, of venture training, right? So like six people have gotten jobs out of the like 30 people that we've trained so far. And that's just like, I mean, we just started it like cohort one and cohort two. We'll do yeah. cohort three in September. So it's a new thing that we started. You know, we're on cohort three this fall. We just finished cohort two. There's about 20 folks in there. Um, and it's super exciting. You know, our last cohort was like 80% non-white and 40% um, non-male. So yeah. You know, blows away the rest of the diversity quotient, you know, quote, like <laughs> statistics in venture. And that's what we're trying to do. Trying to get smart people around, diverse people, teach them how to look at deals and um, hope they learn something, you know, which feedback's been great. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome to have that type of program. And I think we need more and more of those. And there's you're seeing more of these out there. And to your point, like you can't just jump into a GP role necessarily. Also people who want to raise their own fund at some point, it helps to have experience, obviously, but it's going to be very difficult to raise from an LP. One of the last things I'm curious about, just because you're in venture, been here for a number of years already, current markets are screwy. We're in 2022, we're recording this in June. What's your view on the markets right now in terms of how it's affected you? Anything with valuations you've seen be different or anything at all? Just curious on your perspective. Yeah. I mean, look, I think that this is a correction that has that people have been waiting for for a while. Um, so I don't think this is a surprise. This isn't a surprise to anyone who yeah. has been through several cycles or been around the block a few times. Like this was bound to happen right now. What does the chessboard say about the future for this? I mean, look, I think everyone's kind of like, they're still doing what they're doing, but they've slowed down. They've applied the brakes. We're back to fundamentals. I actually wrote a blog post about this or a LinkedIn post about this uh, about maybe two weeks ago. And I was like, if you're a 23 year old entrepreneur today, the last three years, which is like what you've been coming up in learning, building in school, whatever, it's a complete anomaly. I mean, it's insanity. Like nothing has ever been like this before, except for like maybe in the late nineties. And like, I was 10 then. So like, <laughs> you know, like, a lot of us haven't seen that before, but these 20, if you're a young entrepreneur today, you're coming up in the world, like you didn't, you weren't alive in 2010 where if you were raising a venture capital fund or raising a, a you know, capital for a seed fund, like there wasn't even any doors you could knock on. I mean, yeah. so, so we've come a long way with a lot of things, um, a lot of areas, which is super exciting. We've all gotten a little bit smarter but we all got a little bit fat and happy too. So we got to come back to center, care about fundamentals. We're a firm that's always cared about fundamentals anyway. So like, yeah, you know, nothing has really truly changed other than I'm seeing like an easier conversation with entrepreneurs about like, Hey, this isn't really the right price for what you're yeah. doing. Um, I'll, I always say this, the stage that you're investing in, is where all the risk comes in. Series A is a little bit less risky than seed, right? But with that risk comes equity that is commensurate for the risk that you're taking, right? Yeah. And so to raise a 20 pre, you know, 30 post uh, with no revenue and no product, like I'm taking a huge risk. Like I'm not getting anything extra for that other than I just have to deny that I won't be a part of that round and someone else can go take that risk. Right. Yeah. And, and what, but what people are saying is I'm willing to take this risk at this valuation. I'm willing to take that risk. Guess what? I'm not. So yeah. like, that's it. Well, right. It. And, and, and like, but investors, the last maybe like five years, maybe like four years, like 
we've been pushed around with valuations. And it's like, well, I'm raising at this valuation, this amount. And it's like, wait, who said you're raising that? You said you're raising that? Like, okay, good luck. You know? Well, to that point, yeah, you have to get investors to believe in that. If you're going to raise that, that's the challenge. And like, I think we're just seeing a difference in what people are willing to pay. So you're not going to be able to anymore, at least in the same. And I guess, obviously, a lot of factors involved with that. Let's not over, you know, overwrite that. Uh, in terms of like, oh, I sold a company $200 million before different raising your second time. It's totally different. Than oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah. that that factor is t- completely different than like, hi, yeah. I just graduated from Columbia Business School. It's my first company. It's in crypto. And yeah. this is the valuation I'm raising at. And it's like, did someone yeah. tell you that's what they were going to pay for it? Or is that just in your head? Yeah. Like, my advice to founders is tell people how much you're raising and say the price hasn't been, it hasn't been priced yet. You know, yep. Yep. like exactly. that is the most cordial way to raise capital. And then everyone's like, well, I want to find out what the valuation will be. And you're like, oh, yeah, I would love to, <laughs> if you don't lead, I'd love to let you know. I mean, yep. like, so it just, it, it's again, like this is a poker game where the second you are like, I, this is a valuation, but no one said it, then you've just like laid your cards on the table and like you have like a pair of tens, you know, most likely, <laughs> you know, it's an important p- point to make there, Drew. And I think a lot of founders need to understand that. And if you're new, you may not, under- you may not get that. Cause you're like, Oh, I've just saw this company raise at this amount. And like, you may not even know that, which I think it's why it's important that you brought that up. And uh, I was going to wrap things up. I'm just curious on where the best place is to learn more for founders to hear about you, uh, connect with you. They'd like to as well. Just let me know. Oh, you could just drew at hawkmedia.com. Perfect. Drew, thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Anytime, man. This is great. I love this.